In another DJ Brew Tube beer review. What day is it? Um, it's Sunday. No. No? Brew day. Brew day, that's right. That means we were brewing beer all day long. Yes, that's right. We do brew beer. We don't just drink it. We're usually more lazy than brewing the beer, and we just buy it. But today we brewed what? For the first time. That's right. Five Together. gallons. Together. Together, yeah. yeah. Five four, gallons. Four to five gallons. Yeah. We started out with an 8% recipe, and we ended up with a potentially 11% beer. But if you watch enough DJ's brew tube, that probably doesn't surprise you because you know we have to keep supplied with session beer. Uh -huh. So that's why we brew 11%. For all you guys, you know, maybe you're not up to 11% for session beer yet. But we have almost a session beer today. What do we have in front of us, Johnny? Uh, a beer. From whom? Uh, Trogues Brewing Company out of Hershey, Pennsylvania. U.S. of A. Yes. Sir. That's we yay, have, yay. Yay, yay. There we, you go. We have the flying Moflon. Mm-hmm. 2011. That's right. From the annals of DJ Seller. Somewhere. Mm hmm. To barley wine? Yes. It's seasonal. Mm hmm. And it was scratch beer number four since 2007. That's right. Not scotch beer, scratch beer. Ooh. It's 9.3 ABV. And it's 100 ish IBU, which should fade away. When it's fresh, anyway, right? Yes. That. Hell yeah. Malts. Euro Pills, Vienna, Munich, Dark Crystal, Hops, Warner, Chinook, Simcoe, Adjunct Cane Sugar, Yeast, is Ale. Mmm. Get that nice aroma. And that was yes. many of my farts. <laughs> now, wow, dark fruits. when they brew this beer, it's brewed to be what they call like two beers. Why is that? It's meant to be really hoppy when it's new. And if you wait, they say at least four months that it'll turn into a sweet, malty, more of like an English-style barley wine. So it's an American that's brewed, meant to sell it as a barley wine goes. So, what do we got for appearance? Beer. <laughs> really dark brown, a lot of mahogany tones coming through it. It looks a lot like Mad Elf in some ways in the glass, but it's ruddy. Or they say it's kind of like pushing nugget nectar, nectar, nectar off of a cliff. I haven't drank enough beer today. Yeah. Um, like pushing nugget nectar off a cliff. So maybe it's like a doubled up recipe of nugget nectar. It's got some of the same you know, ingredients. Got about a finger and a half ahead here when I swirl it. Lots of glass lacing already, tons of alcohol eggs, but that's a lovely beer in our Mad Elf Snifters. So let's get an aroma on it. Dark fruit, toffee, Big. caramel. Orange. A lot of raisins, a bit of chocolate. Wow, a lot of layers of aroma. This uh, this smells a lot like the uh, Doppelstick I had the other day. That had a lot of these big, big up-in-your-face barley wine characteristics. Wow, the hops that are in this beer fresh, which are very IPA-like, are pretty much all gone. All I get is a little floral notes, maybe some honey left over, and some citrus. Yeah, I was about to say, I get some sort of lemon. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting like a orangey, so it could be about the same. Everybody knows a little different, but... I think it's time to dive in. You ready? Cheers. Cheers. And cheer to beer. Cheer to beer. Mmm. Wow. Mm. Smooth. I get chocolate in there. More than you would think. Raisins. A lot of figs and prunes and dates. I get honey. And, and a good amount of caramel. I'm not getting the orange or citrus that I smelled. It's like a fig Newton. It's really figgy and dark fruity. Mm -hmm. Now this is a nearly three year old beer. They released this between, you know, like um, like March and April, somewhere around. They say April, but. I've seen it out earlier, like in March. I've actually purchased it in March before. I guess it depends what they got going on in their brewery. This one, since it's a 2011, I believe, was produced in the old brewery that wasn't in Harrisburg. Yeah, in Harrisburg, not in Hershey. I think I'd have to look back. I can't remember exactly. You're right. But I'm sure 2012 they were in the new brewery. Yeah. But 
That said, the alcohol is super well hidden. I didn't get any of the aroma. I'm not getting the taste. I do get alcohol warming in the chest, but it's not like knocking me over with booze or anything like that. It's dry. Yeah, it's got a dry back end. It's really smooth when you drink it. But it's just a lot of big Newton. It is. It's a big, like dark car like caramelized dark fruit bomb. And mm. it's a tasty beer, it's but it's its own creature. Like fresh, it doesn't taste anything like this when it's fresh. When it's fresh, it's it's very D I P A like Most when it's like fresh. Cracker like in the middle with the dryness. And with the fruit. That's why I think like, I'm getting like a almost graham cracker to saltine. Like a like a that like a kind of sweetness and you almost get off of that or no I'm getting <clears throat> the sweetness of the fig or dark fruit along with that that's why it's making me really feel like it's a cookie you know it's mm -hmm. all in one maybe it's like a, uh, a uh, cracker with a like a prune preserves put on it or something but really really tasty beer I think it's soured well I don't get any oxidation on it and. This is kind of what you expect, maybe, out of a beer like this as it sits when those hops come down. I mean, you get, the thing with barley wine is if they don't brew it to cellar, you'll get a cardboard taste in it because of what's the, what the hops leave over. And I'm not getting any of that, are you? And I'm wondering if that's the cracker taste. Maybe it is. I mean, because they're, they're pretty, um, you know, high alpha acid hops they're putting in there, you know, yeah. with, the, with the Warrior and the Simcoe and all that. Yeah. But... Whatever the alchemy they're using in here with the with the grains and the sugar and all that and the yeast, I think it's it's come together pretty well. So here we're both pretty much enjoying this beer. What do we grade something like this? Well, our but buddies over at Rate Beer, ninety nine. Hey, it's above eight percent. And the dudes over at Beer Advocate <coughs> give it a ninety two. Uh huh. It's an A minus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. I like it. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Um, though it doesn't do a lot for me. Mm-hmm. You can give it an 88. 88? B plus? Yeah. I'm going to go with a 90. Like A minus. So, and I can see 88 totally because it, it doesn't have a lot of complexity. I think that's where it falls off. It tastes good. The alcohol is well hidden and it's cellared well. Those are all positives. But the complexity that are in other barley wines, like English barley wines and stuff, the depth of flavor isn't there but it is a really good beer don't you know i mean i don't think we mean to knock it in any way no. and it's sellered really well but i can't see giving a an a, a plus you know a 99 but I, I think like a 93 to an 80 89 or i mean 85 i can see that range people giving it that grade i think it's high for beer advocate but i don't know why i just well I remember this beer has been around a long true, time true. and i think some of the older grades you got like you got like bigger marks back in the yeah. day before people had a lot of beer experience. Yeah. But anyway, so that's what we're grading. If you guys have had this beer, let us know what you think. We like the quid pro quo, though he prefers back and forth. <sighs> but, you know, that's a Latin thing. You know, mi casa, su casa, potato, potato, whatever. So, to the next EJ's Food to remember to think globally, drink locally, and support the craft beer movement. Also, please remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and hit the like button. Until then, we got nothing but a bunch of flying, mo flying. I don't know about love, but high level of happiness for you. Until then, what do we got for him? A big peace out!